I just realized I have to find the... I have to remember not to swear in the first eight seconds. You know what's uh, really good about that, though? We have a, a theme song that plays at the beginning, so I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, and welcome everyone to Shonen Archive. It's uh, I'm Woki, and I'm here with Zenra. Hello. What's Shonen Archive? Shonen Archive is a show in which me and Zen have dedicated ourselves to watching all Shonen Jump anime that is available to us until the end of time itself, or until one of us gets taken out by some mysterious object sometime in the future. <laughs> Who knows when we'll be taken down, or if we will ever. I don't know. It could happen. At that point, you should just... Now that AI technology is... And we never talked about this, but, you know, let's talk about it now. Now that AI technology is getting to the point where it's getting scary, if I go down first, because I am going down first, I need you to put <laughs> my personality in an AI and continue the show. <laughs> just, I assume it will go perfectly fine. Just try to not make him say anything too <laughs> racist, like most AIs. <laughs> I'll do my best. Thank you. And what are we talking about today? We're going to be talking about the end of Season 1 of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Yes, we are putting the end of Season 1 behind us and moving on to a new one and continuing on with Yu-Gi-Oh! GX at a later time. So what episodes are we going to be talking about today? Episodes, oh, hold on to your butts. Episode 47, episode 48, episode 49... Episode 50, episode 51, and episode 52. A lot of episodes, but thank God most of these episodes are just really long duels. <laughs> so, easy enough to talk about. Ooh, let's get right into it, Zen. Uh, we're going to start with a y- y- episode 47. Uh, as it's known in Japanese, Asuka vs. Manjome, Cyber Angel Benten, or as it's known in English, Chazanova. Can you take a <laughs> wild guess what this episode's about? <laughs> Go ahead. So, uh, Manjome is like um, thinking back to like all the shit that's happened, and he realizes that he is in love with Asuka. Um, everyone's kind of like congratulating Judai for defeating the stars and everything, and um, Manjome Show- decides that he needs to. Um, needs to win over Asuka, and he sees her with Rio at the lighthouse where they always are. <laughs> yes, and he's like, he's like, oh my god, they're dating. Um, and then he decides he needs to impress her, so he decides that he is going to uh, duel her. So he steals all of the keys, sealing away the sacred beasts. He takes all of them. And he goes to the beach, and everyone rushes there at the beach, and he says that um, he'll only give them back if he duels Asuka and uh, she wins. But if he wins, he gets a date with her instead. Um, they do that, and the date pool begins for the date. And this is obviously an incredibly dumb fuck plan. Because when he ends up, of course, losing the duel, because the only duels that Alexis is allowed to win are to prevent her from being arranged married <laughs> to someone at random. Um, that counts as fulfilling the ritual of the keys. So she basically unlocks every gate all at the same time by beating Chaz in this jokey-ass duel. Perfect. Uh, and that's... Is that, is that the end of it? Or did you go for the duel? Uh, no, we didn't particularly talk about the duel. I mean, the, the duel, it's a, it's a duel. They do a lot of, uh, of Ojama man. shenanigans. He brings out um, the Ojama King, which is one of the funniest cards in GX. Just a big-ass Ojama. Mm, and uh, this one gets put in a tux. Yes. <laughs> uh, because he gives it the, the, the dress-up card. Um, he does end up eventually losing to uh cyber angel ben 10 because she um because his ojama tokens are not destroyed they're they're tributed for a ritual instead Mm -hmm. um so it doesn't do any damage to her because it doesn't fulfill their effects and she ends up winning 
because she uh, destroys Ojama King with Cyber Angel Benton. Mm -hmm. And this is also the debut of the meme card. The Chaz's infamous trap card that is light on one side and darkness on the other side. <laughs> Dramatic crossroads. Oh, yeah. For uh, for some reason, I was thinking Light and Darkness Dragon, which is his ace no, that's, uh, manga card. Yeah, that's his ace uh, manga card. Uh, I was real happy to see that one. I thought that was funny when it showed up. <laughs> um, Deanna, was there any difference in the adaptations then that the, you can tell us? So the actual conversation between uh, Rio and um, Asuka is different at the lighthouse. So they're talking about her brother, um, and they're talking about, like, oh, it's great that he's back. Hmm. And Kaiser's like, yeah, now I can graduate with no um, with no regrets, because now my friend is back and everything. Um, and Asuka's like, you know, thank you for, for always being there for me, because I, I really do consider you like my brother. Um, and the dub version, uh, Kaiser's like, hey, are you okay? Because you got, like, kidnapped. You should get a bodyguard or whatever. And she's like, oh, thanks, but I can take care of myself. I'm tough. And uh, and he goes, yeah, I'm going to miss you when I graduate. And then they leave. More, I feel like more uh, hiding the fact, that the dub seems to hide the fact that um, the bond between Asuka and Ryo is literally just like, he, she sees him as a brother. I feel like that's a deliberate play on them to make them feel like, oh, you know, maybe. You never know. Because in English, you need to have... You can't just have a relationship between a man and a woman and it be very clearly one built on friendship. <laughs> ah, here's my notes from this episode. Um, at one point in the beginning, show says, wow, everyone knows about our fight with the seven stars. And I said, fuck off, show. You I, <laughs> didn't do shit. You did not duel. You were not a part of the team. You actively cost Kaiser the match. You were a detriment. He was taken prisoner at least twice. Yes. And I was like, unbelievable. This guy, the bro thinks he's on the team. He's like, what of us? What of the seven? <laughs> Hands up for show. No not having it on me when uh manchomi is wondering i wonder where asuka is all he does is look at the lighthouse <laughs> and he knows <laughs> that she's there i was so fucking happy to see this you have no idea how much i love this fucking joke i don't know if it's a joke for real that they're just always at this always at the lighthouse, lighthouse. Yeah. yes they're just always there at this many episodes in 47 episodes and they have to realize we show these characters a lot of the time but this fucking lighthouse <laughs> Even after when the main purpose of going to the lighthouse was potentially to see if her brother would be there, that lot once he was there, it's like ah, oh, that's not there anymore. Um, I like the conversation between her and um Kaiser, where she says like I really look at you as a brother when my I lost my brother, and I put here in my notes, uh, Kaiser was more of a brother to Oscar than he was to Show. <laughs> True. Because uh, Asuka would have an issue and he'd be like, let's solve this together. Sho would have a problem and Kaiser would leave him like a riddle and then just fuck off. Yeah, like not a useful one either. Just like a go fuck yourself. Like, yeah. He would drop you don't it. to play cards, you, you shouldn't even be here. And he just like leaves. Yeah, Asuka got like real advice and Sho got like fortune cookie <laughs> style <laughs> advice. <laughs> He's like, you will be happy one day and bring joy to another. How does that help me with power bond? I guess you weren't ready for it, show. <laughs> like that's <laughs> you weren't ready all along. You should just go home. <laughs> go home. You're not ready. Take <laughs> you, person dueling show. Take this twenty dollars and never bring this up to me again. Um. I hate that this is another duel that is... The third duel is of specifically Asuka's that is related to her. Someone trying to either force her into marriage or a date. <laughs> this It happens so often. Yeah, it happens constantly with her. Oh my god, so sad to see. Because <laughs> I really do like Asuka. I get it that I guess her deck is not the strongest, but also your main character plays elemental heroes. Don't fucking tell me that, <laughs> that you can't show... Asuka in some way actually winning, but whatever. There's a really good part in the duel where um, 
Manjome activates Graceful Charity, and he draws into Pot of Greed, just going, you know, casual, plus, <laughs> plus, plus, like, fucking crazy. Oh, man, I miss this era, where you could just, like, play Graceful Charity into your Pot of Greed. <laughs> yeah, Graceful Charity into Pot of Greed, into fucking whatever you want. Yeah, it was a, it was a beautiful time. Um... I, I put down here because he puts down Ojama tokens and basically floodgates her. And I said, I'm no expert in women, but I'm pretty sure exactly zero women have ever fallen for a man who floodgates them in Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Which is true. Uh, this is maybe one of my favorite lines from this episode. I'm going to show it to you because I think it's amazing out of context. Uh, it's <laughs> when Ojama Black takes down Ojama King. And he's <laughs> and he screams out, subverting the hierarchy, and he fucking whams right into him. I uh, love you, GX man. It's so good. I was like, oh, that's amazing. Love it. <laughs> um, another line, man. I was on fucking fire. I said, um, the worst you can say isn't no. It's I prefer playing Yu Gi Oh. <laughs> being in a relationship with you when she says I'm in love with dueling itself. Yeah, she's literally like, Yu-Gi-Oh is better than you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Understandable. Uh, I could not compete with uh, 27 negates on field. <laughs> Just not something I could really do. Uh, and it was nice to see Ben 10 before Drytron's ruined Ben 10 and got her on the limited list. <laughs> yep. And so, yeah, it's a very eh episode, but, you know, it's one going into the next one, and there's some good funny bits. It's one of the more funnier bad episodes, and it is one of the, like, boring bad ones. So, I'll take it. Yeah, it's one of those ones that's, like, useless, but also good. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I didn't have too much uh, actual negativity, other than the fact that, you know, like, yo, it's another Oscar match where... She, the, what's on the line is a, a, a man leaving her alone, potentially. But, you know, do what you can. How do you feel about it, Zen? It was good. It was one of those ones that's just, it's extremely dumb. And it's really funny to me that, that, that they were like, okay, we can't have the good guys lose. So they have to win. But we also need them to lose so we can progress the plot. What do we do? Um... Let's have fucking Manjome steal them all to go on a date with Asuka and then lose them all. Yeah, that's definitely a case of like, <laughs> <laughs> If it was any other character, I would probably be much angrier, but uh, <laughs> don't care. It's fine. At least that's the implication here at the end of this episode. I think in the next one they reveal that for some reason the spirit keys actually didn't matter. And it was actually just dual energy in general. I don't remember. Zen, let's move on to the next episode. <laughs> and let's talk about episode 48 versus Kagamaru part 1, Two Phantom Demons, or as it's called in the English version, Rise of the Sacred Beast, part 1. So, yeah, the uh, <clears throat> the Sacred Beasts, just for those of you who don't know or who only know the dub, um, the Sacred Beasts are not called the Sacred Beasts in the Japanese version. They're called the Phantom Beasts mm-hmm. in the Japanese version. Um, they are the the evil god cards. Um, so the spirit gates open up. Um, everyone's like, "Ah, oh, shit!" Uh, the keys start pulling themselves toward um, where the cards are, and then they break away and they go into like the pillars that open up where the cards are. Um, everyone gets mad at Chaz, like, "Fuck you, you little idiot!" <laughs> um, was it worth it for the potential? Was it worth it, asshole? <laughs> And he goes, um, yes, the- are you kidding me? Have you seen Asuka? <laughs> I'd do it again. <laughs> you motherfuckers are blind. <laughs> I would do this shit in a heartbeat if I thought I could win. Uh, uh, so the, the Phantom Beast cards are freed from like this little pillar under the island. Um, and they're all like, oh, we gotta get them. And then uh, a spider robot old man jumps out of a like airplane. <laughs> Or helicopter? I don't remember which one. Um, and he is... He, he, that's his life support system, is this spider robot. Yeah, uh, which looks like... I don't know if he did it on purpose, it looks like a dick from far away. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I'm gonna show um, you this screenshot, because I took it, and I was like, I, they, they had 
this someone on that R and D team hated him. <laughs> it really does. Um, and he is the superintendent slash chairman of Duel Academy, uh, who then goes and gets the um, the cards because yeah, they reveal that like oh the keys don't actually do anything. The gates open because of fighting spirit or whatever. Um, they all go to to duel him, and then the old man's like, "The only one I'm gonna fight is is Judai because he's the main character. Um, mm. I'll I'll blow up the whole island <laughs> if you don't duel me." It's just fucking insane. Um, they do this cool little like, "Get him, bro!" Where he, where uh, Show throws the backpack over to Judai, who catches it and pulls his dual disc out. Um. And then he also finds the card that he got from his uh, professor, the professor that was a alchemical homunculus. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the Philosopher's Stone. Um, so he puts it in his deck, and they go start the duel. Um, the, the old man in the life support spider is dueling inside the life support spider, and the life support spider is wearing a duel disc, which is fucking incredible amazing absolutely <laughs> this is the, not since the monkey dueling have we seen something truly amazing <laughs> this man is not even conscious really and he is dueling and then uh they they proceed to duel for a while he keeps summoning more and more uh phantom beast monsters and it reveals that like um they they're absorbing the the energy from the the spirits like the dual spirits or whatever um, the only one who's not affected by this is Judai because he's currently in the duel. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, if he defeats him, then it will... Uh, he'll, he'll end up uh, absorbing Judai's... Um, Monsters. His, like, natural ability to speak to the card spirits or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, he he eventually breaks out of his tube as, like, a super ripped young man. He basically like, turns yes. into a JoJo villain. He, yeah, pretty much, yeah. And then he's like, we'll continue now. He then tosses his fucking spider body. <laughs> Just like tosses that shit into the air. I was like, fuck. I got a picture of it right here because it was I caught it right at the right moment where he's just like <laughs> fucking tossing it. It's amazing. This is true dueling. And is that the end of part one? Yes. It is. It is. Uh, is was there any difference in adaptations then? Uh, only one. In the original show, tells Kagamaru uh, that what Asuka is telling him is correct when when she's like yelling at him. He's like, "She's right." In the dub version, he says, "Hey, don't make him mad. He's scary." <laughs> That's a point to original show. At least original show in here, they made him more of a coward. <laughs> they made him more true to his character in the dub. All right, let me see my notes here. Um, this giant, when he originally first showed up, I said, holy shit, Dr. Wheelow is here. The the villain from the Dragon Ball movie, uh, World's Mightiest, is that what it's called? Um, that is the Dr. Wheelow one, yeah. Yes, he looks like that. This robot is really good. The way it is built to duel, fantastic. Um, giant penis yeah, design. He just looks like cars. He does look a lot like cars. I'm telling you, he has a full-on JoJo transformation. Um, the villain uses Masawa as a punchline when he's asking for people to duel because it looks like Masawa's about to say, I'll duel you, and then he immediately just goes, no. Like, he doesn't even give him the chance of saying, <laughs> I'll, like, he doesn't even get the chance <laughs> to say, let me duel you. He's just, like, outright, like, no, leave. Um, some actual fun differences in cards. Um... Uriah's effect originally, his actual legit effect is that you have to get rid of three continuous traps. In the anime, they realized, holy shit, this effect that sucks. sucks ass. Yeah. yeah. So now his attack. Oh, yeah, it's, it's only three traps, isn't it? Just yeah. Like any. Much better. Much better effect. So, yeah, he gets to be able to get a thousand attack from like actual legitimately good trap cards as opposed to back then, which there wasn't that many amazing continuous traps there was like imperial order i think and that's basically it um uh, there was one other one 
Hmm. Back then, I think, still existed. Um, fuck. Skill Drain? Skill Drain did exist back then, yes. Uh, that wasn't the one I was thinking of. Hmm. Um, Do you remember the guy on it? I might be remember able to remember it by that. Royal no. Oppression. Which one? Royal Oppression. The pay 800 life points, stop a special summon. Yes. That was also there, uh, but that still wasn't one I was thinking. I'm mm. looking up a list right now. Royal Decree. Um, yeah, Royal Decree is the obvious one. Yeah. Um, Spirit Barrier. Spirit Barrier oh, existed yeah. back then. Yeah, it did. Fair enough. Um, at one point, I looked at uh, Judai's hand, and I said, this hand fucking sucks. He has Skyscraper. Polymerization, which he drew off a of pot of greed, and then his hand was in the Wink Reba level 10 quick play spell, the bubble, uh, the one, I think it's the bubble blaster, the one where he shoots the fish, Sparkman and, bubble blaster, yeah. yeah, bubble blaster, Sparkman and <laughs> Avion, and that was his hand. That's what he had to go against the gods. <laughs> the, this, for this series is gods, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, other than that, that's what I have for now. Um, I did like when the monster started disappearing because Adrama Yellow looks like in dire straits. Yeah, he's like, he looks like they, the girls looked in Gintama after they all shot themselves. <laughs> they do! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> uh, yeah, and I liked it when he showed up as cars, because I was like, alright, let's just make this more ridiculous than it already is. <laughs> Uh, how do you feel about it, Zen? This is the start of one, so obviously we can go into more detail for the next one. But how do you feel about this one for a part one? Um, the part one is... It's cool. Um, I mean, obviously, it's just like, oh no, Judah is losing. We, that's bad. But, like, there's so much funny shit in this. The fact that he's in a life support pod that is wearing a dual disc on it is <laughs> one of my favorite things. Like, what the fuck? And then, yeah, he come, he emerges his cars... Because the the Phantom Beasts have like used the energy they absorb to heal him or whatever, which is why he wanted them the whole time. And he mm. picks up his fucking. You know what he looks like? He looks like that kid who became Tarzan and drew cards really well in the forest. <laughs> he does a little bit. <laughs> uh, That's the pinnacle of power. In the Yu Gi Oh GX, this is what the male body looks like. Yeah, this is what peak performance looks like. Mm hmm. And yeah, so let's move on to the next episode. This next episode, the, the the suspension of disbelief in order for you to believe that this duel is something that is winnable by Judai is amazing. Yeah, well, I mean, he gets, you know, the most ridiculous fucking um, card ever, which is the Philosopher's Stone, which in the anime, the power is literally just like, you can just make this whatever the fuck you want it to be. Yeah. Whenever it, you want it to be it. It's, it's um, pretty crazy, but... Uh, let, yeah, and it's like three times or whatever he can do that. Yeah, and then the third time uh, it turns into something completely different. Then you can activate its effect, right? Well, yes. let's get into it. Let's Episode 49 yeah. versus Kagamaru Part 2, Awakening of the Three Phantom Demons, <gasps> or Rise of the Sacred Beast Part 2, as it's known. Yeah, so they the duel continues. <laughs> um, he's got two of the beasts on the field as Judai is desperately trying to do literally anything. Um, it, it, most of the earlier portion of the duel is just Judai like not dying <laughs> every turn. It's pretty much it. My um, favorite is when he special summons Wing Karibo and he gets immediately fucking blasted out of the sky. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that happens a lot, but it happens here as well. Mm -hmm. Um, eventually he gets the third um Phantom Beast, which is like the good one, which is Ravio. Um. So funny enough, modern days, Hamon is the best one, I think. Because he's the easiest to really? summon. I think uh, they're all, aren't they? They're all actually, they're summon. all insane. They're about the same way. Yeah. And Raviel yeah. got a retrain. That's true. Okay, you know what? I'll take that back. I think, yeah, I can see Raviel is the best one. I do like Hamon's for defensive ability when it's in defense, though. <laughs> well, I know when you play the deck for them, you summon Hamon first. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, but, but Ravio is definitely your closer. Of fighting, so I, it's all the same thing. Yeah, uh, we can all agree. Uriel is the worst. <laughs> of, yes, of the Uriah. Three. Uriah. Yeah. So much so I forgot his name. <laughs> Go ahead, um, continue. 
Yeah, so they're dueling, and he gets out um, Raviel, and this causes them to start draining the cards everywhere instead of just, like, right around the area. Um, Ojama Yellow is fucking dead. He's oh, just a skeleton yeah. in his he art now. Dies. It's amazing. He fucking dies. Um, he, they they keep dueling, and um, Raviel keeps summoning, like, these little tokens <laughs> that Judai can't get off the field. Um, he does end up destroying Hamon with Shining Flare Wingman, and it doesn't do anything because he negates the effect damage and all this shit, and it's just constantly, like, literally anything you can do doesn't work. Um... He uh, reveals that he like can use this Philosopher's Stone card to essentially transform into whatever card he wants out of his deck three times. Um, so the first time he uses it on Fusion Recovery, the second time he uses it on Defusion, uh, and the third time he uses it on Miracle Fusion, which summons uh, Elemental Hero Electrum, which is a terrible card. Mm -hmm. uh, it's fucking awful. And because he's now used it three times, he can use the real effect of it, which is to equip it to a monster and multiply that monster's attack by the number of monsters the opponent controls. So its attack goes up to 14,500 attack points. Yeah. Uh, and then he attacks over Raviel and wins. And then everything gets back to normal. I forget, do they have... Oh yeah, everything's back. Ojama Yellow comes back to life and... I think no. But then some more happens because I think this is where we see what ends up happening to this character because he doesn't die. The Kagemara, I think he reverts uh, back well, no, to he, an old man. He, he doesn't die, but he turns back into like an old guy, but not like a literally can't survive old guy. He's just like an old man now. Oh, that's right. Um, and then Judai yeah, gives... hugs him and like breaks his back, and he has to get taken <laughs> to the hospital. <laughs> Uh, the main hero, everyone, <laughs> destroys the villain's this role. Old man's spinal cord. And then it ends with Crowler saying, hey, we got exams next week. And yeah, and then Judah's like, oh, that's worse than the world-ending duel. And then it ends. Aw, game on, get your game on. <laughs> Good for your cards, right? Uh, was there a difference in adaptation? Uh, well, this is listed as a difference in adaptation, but I, I don't really know why it is one. Uh, oh, okay. In the English version, the effect of the Philosopher's Stone that transforms it into another card is called card coveting, um, a term they do not use in the Japanese version. Okay. Whatever. Tiny. Um, this episode, this is a very funny episode. There's no, this is really weird because it's so bizarre that, that we've been basically building up to this entire duel and I feel like the way it actually goes down is in the most hilarious set of circumstances. Here's what I have in my notes. Um, first of all, shout outs to the only Yu-Gi-Oh villain brave enough to duel in a loincloth around his junk. Very brave <laughs> man. Uh, Neo Bubble Man solos two sacred beasts by himself. <laughs> the goat. Judai's strongest soldier, elemental hero <laughs> Neo Bubble Man. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous because the, these shots of like Neo Bubble Man taking down Haman and uh, Uriah are fucking hilarious because he's like shooting Bubble Beam and Haman with his giant like God Blast is getting destroyed and Ur Uriah gets completely eviscerated by bubbles. <laughs> it's great. Um, uh, at one point. Judai says, uh, no one, one, no one wants to be your friend. <laughs> Which continues the trend of main characters. It's similar to Woody when Woody called off one of those, was it, uh, Xanor? Or one of the Heartless where he says, like, you're someone who doesn't have a lot of friends. <laughs> yeah, the, the scene where Woody is, like, holding Sora back is the funniest shit on the planet. It is. A more main character should call out villains for being friendless. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, there's a really cool shot where I think with he's summoning um, Shining Flare Wingman where they just show a lot of the elemental heroes. There's a really funny shot of Bubble Man next to Neo Bubble Man which makes it look like don't talk to me or my son ever again. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Uh, 
it I always like it when Shining Flare Wingman comes out because the way he deals effect damage where he just kind of shines menacingly he at the end. It's hard, yeah. It's yeah. really funny. That's really good. I like that in the way he wins this is very true to what elemental heroes do today in modern day, which is make one elemental hero really big and then win that turn. That that strategy has not changed at all for elemental heroes. <laughs> That's still what they do. <laughs> And yeah, I really like the shot of all the characters. Um, like at one point, two young boys are like looking at like cards that are for sale, and they're all gone, uh, which makes it really seem like there had to have been a scene where Kaiba's blue eyes just go away. And I for I would love nothing more than the two minutes of seeing Kaiba just extremely pissed that his blue eyes are gone. <laughs> What? <laughs> Put me on the plane back to that fucking dual academy. It's got to be so much fucking trouble. I clearly... <laughs> I clearly need to step in here and fucking put an end to this, but thankfully he didn't need to do any of that, so it's like, all right, all right, we're good. Mokuba, call off the jet, call off the war tanks. I know I told you to decommission them, but then, you know, keep them just in case, but, you know, we don't need them anymore. Uh, we're fine here. And the, the ending here where the bad guy's like, well, I'm old now, please forgive me. And he goes, ah, whatever, man. And he gives him a hug and he basically fucking cripples him. It's really funny. And ends up staying true to the kind of feel of uh, Judai as we've kind of known him, where he's kind of a little bit more laid back, even though in this specific circumstance, seems a lot. This guy did try and kill him multiple times. <laughs> so little bit funky but it's true i guess to his character so enjoyable and liked my time with it i do feel like the true ending of gx is much better than this so it ends up feeling like i don't know the phantom beast kind of feel like when you compare them specifically to the god cards they kind of feel like weenies in comparison yeah there's there's no comparison at all yeah it's it's, um yeah it's not even the final episode of the season there's there's the real ending like you said is significantly better yeah, and and the dude's able to summon all three of them pretty easily, and it's more of a big deal. I don't know, maybe maybe in my mind, I th- I don't think they should have gone for like trying to make knockoff versions of the god cards because I think it ends up making it GX look a little bit unfavorable. But maybe that's what they wanted to say. It's like we're gonna kill these knockoffs and then we're gonna move on because we actually have better stuff planned for the end finale. Our end finale is not related to. Uh, the big bad guy who summoned the god cards. Ours is a little bit more building to something character related, which in that case, yeah, it works out. But it ends up feeling like these cards that are, <laughs> in essence, supposed to be this big deal. Ah, uh, he could have just like gotten them, and dude, I could have probably just saved the day at the end of the day. <laughs> it, that's what it kind of feels like. It didn't feel like they were that much of a. Yeah, because like in the original, um, you know, one god card was like. Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> like, what do I do now? And this one, he gets all three, and Judah's like, "Yeah, I attack for game." Yes, <laughs> he summons all three. <laughs> but in the original, which now it makes it feel like I'm a boomer. In the original, when Kaiba summoned Obelisk, he fucking destroyed that guy, and he got guy got so destroyed. The guard, the guy who won the card off of, ripped up the card and said, "Man, I'm quitting dueling." That's how fucked up that god card was, because he didn't want to duel in a place where someone had a card with that much power. <laughs> He gave up on Yu-Gi-Oh! itself. Like, that's what a god card should really be signified as, but yeah, they end up coming off as a little bit weenies, but there was no way for really to follow them up, so I understand. Um, Sometimes, the opening, them in the opening does look pretty cool, though. I'll give them that much, even if their effects are not off the the snuff. Which is funny, because now in the modern day, the Phantom Beasts are actually playable, and the god cards all kind of suck, because none of them have their effect. Yeah, yeah, the Phantom Beasts are better in the actual game. Yeah, funny, funny how it turns out like that. Though I don't know what the new support the new the new support for the gun card seems funny, but those base cards are always just gonna be not that good. You have to rely more on their matches and traps. Ah, what do you feel about this episode, Zen? Uh, it's good. It's kind of like you said that the Phantom Beasts are kind of underwhelming. Um. The Philosopher's Stone is cool. You're completely right. That like, yeah, the the level of like absolute bullshit they have to go through to make Judai able to win this, um, it's fucking ridiculous. Um, 
And it's funny that Judai snaps an old man's spinal cord at the end of this. <laughs> the original Yu-Gi-Oh! would have way less villains if uh, Yugi just broke their back <laughs> like Bane after they were done. Pegasus? <laughs> <Get rid. laughs> oh, that would be so amazing if he just fucking broke Pegasus. Ooh! <laughs> Goes down. <laughs> Varric, after he gets control of his body, Pharaoh, thank you so much for giving me back. Hold up, <laughs> we got some unfinished business here. What do you? Oh, <laughs> it just hauls him over his head. It snaps his back on his knee. Wait, I have a, I have a tattoo to show you. Oh God, <laughs> the baby. <pain. laughs> and then at the end, when the final duel happens, <laughs> little Yugi snaps his back before he goes into the afterworld. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. And then when in the movie when uh Kaiba goes to the afterlife to fight him, we see that he is in the spider with uh fucking life support system <laughs> in the afterlife. Oh, that'd be amazing. Ancient Pharaoh <laughs> spider tech. <laughs> I'd be here for it. I'm all here for it. Alright, let's move on to the next episode. We've got Episode 50, Hayato versus Kronos, Ayers Rock Sunrise, or it's known in the English version, a much worse name, Magna Cum Loud. Or I guess Magna uh, Chum Magna Loud. Cum Laude. <laughs> Ma- is, Magna Chum Laude? Because, you know, it's a play on Chumley. So it would be Magna uh, uh, Chum Laude. I guess, sure. <laughs> you're not going to fight me on this? Um, After this many years, I'm, you're just done? <laughs> I'm just going to let it happen. Fair enough. Um, so, <laughs> this is after the fucking fate of the world. Uh, Chumley gets offered a job at Industrial Illusions. And then, for some reason, Kronos is like, oh, but you can't take the job if, if you don't beat me in a duel. <laughs> he has to feel like you are something. He's like, this guy is clearly a failure. <laughs> he has not learned a single thing. <laughs> he has to prove it to me in a duel. Um, so, they... They they decide to duel, and the whole the whole episode is just him dueling. Um... Oh, that's right, because Pegasus is like, hey, if if Duel Academy recommends you for this job, I will hire you right now, like immediately, because mm. your cards are rule. Um, mm, they rule. He's like a great artist or whatever. He is. He's fantastic. He's... They show it when they're yeah. like looking at all the like uh, OC art of like Judas, where he makes like this like weird fucking robot with cool sunglasses and a uh, show drew magicians of Valkyrie, but like in a chibi form. And then, <laughs> and then Hayato draws like this most detailed background of fucking Australia. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually amazing. It's beautiful. He is, it is really nice art to look yeah, at. It is really good. Yeah. Um, so they, uh, they duel. Uh, Kronos is like, you gotta, you gotta duel me, and if you win, I'll recommend you. Um, uh, Hayato is for some reason allowed to use the card that he made, which I presume is not legal, <laughs> but he is allowed to use it. I'll allow um, it. You're like, all right, whatever, <laughs> fuck it. Um, Kronos does win, but then they kind of have this heartwarming moment at the end where he's like, actually, I didn't really care if you won or lost as long as you showed that you actually did improve as a duelist in your time here, which you did, uh, so I am willing to offer you my recommendation for this job. Uh, he can't, he literally, they're just like, you've graduated now, which not how schools work, even if you get a job. No, it, it's, school, it's not just like, congratulations. It's congratulations. very similar to the um, ending. The, there's a part in the movie Idiocracy where a character has to fight for a presidential pardon. Uh, he has to fight in a deaf arena to get himself pardoned. Um, and at the end, the president just goes up and, <laughs> and says, this motherfucker's been pardoned. <laughs> and that's not how the pardon <laughs> system works. <laughs> but yeah, very similar to that <laughs> when he graduates. Uh, and yeah, that's this episode. Was there any differences in adaptation? Uh, there were. This so, is a big one. Yeah. So in the English version, basically, um, Kronos is a giant cunt the whole time. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, ha ha, you fucking suck. <laughs> you stupid fucking koala duelist. Um, 
And then at the end, he's like, alright, you're good. In the Japanese version, which this is a theme yeah. of GX, is that, um, you know, in the Japanese version, they're, like, respectful. Because, like, Kronos in the Japanese version is, like, you're you're doing much better. Like, th- that was a really good move. And he even thinks, like, you know, maybe I should just throw the game. Because he has limiter removal. The, re- the way he wins is he uses limiter removal uh, to, to counter um, Hayato's attack and, and win. And he actually thinks for a minute, like, maybe I shouldn't. Like, maybe I should just let him win right here because like, he really has earned it. Mm-hmm. Um, he doesn't do that, but he does think about it. Um, in the English version, he's just a douche. Yeah. Uh, the English version also cuts a great deal of uh, Hayato's, like, flashbacks to his journey since he met Judai and all that stuff. Um, mm. Yeah, because the English version also loves to cut content. That's so crazy, because this is... Mm. Now I'm getting actually angry at the English version, which I very rarely get, but I feel like that's actually super uh, important to this episode and how it builds up. That it's actually kind of annoying that they would cut so much of the action. Same thing with uh, Kronos, that they would cut so much of the character stuff. And I guess I guess that's just kind of their thing, you know? It's one of those things of, like, Oscar says, like, man, he really tried versus, well, he failed. <laughs> it's definitely a difference in attitude, but... Ah, uh, shame. Let me start talking about this episode, because... I absolutely love this episode. I think this might actually be my favorite episode of all of GX Season 1. <laughs> so let's start. We start with, obviously, the greatest thing ever. Uh, show wins a fight against Judai, a duel against Judai, because he didn't draw a polarization. So he set Clayman and lost to Drill Ride. <laughs> Oh, it's so funny. As it, I like whatever the games are. Oh man, this really makes it seem like whenever Judai is not dueling, when stuff is on the line, he's like breaking so hard. <laughs> he's like losing. <laughs> he's like setting he's what it's like. What it's like actually playing elemental heroes. Yeah, he's got like nothing but useless cards in hand. He's setting Bubble Man and passing and being really sad. And he's losing to fucking Patroid, Gyroid, and Drillroid beatdown. <laughs> Really funny to see. Um, a lot of the art stuff is great. Um, show st- shows that uh, continues to show that he's at his best when he's talking about his love for women because he draws magicians of Valkyrie, and I thought that was actually a very nice, <laughs> simple drawing of magicians of Valkyrie. It was a very interesting choice. Um, Judai, super cool robot man. <laughs> which I assume would be an elemental hero if he had his way with it, was really good. And obviously Haito does an amazing fucking drawing of Australia and the Outback. This is my first time ever hearing Japanese Pegasus when he showed up. And I was, like, actually flabbergasted about how his, uh, how he talks. Because instead of going, hmm, he goes, oh. <laughs> That's like... Yeah. The English version, like, people, I bet people probably who only know the four kids dub assume that Pegasus being super flamboyant is, like, a dub thing. Yeah. It is not. No. He's like, ah, he's very much a flamboyant in the Japanese He's violently one. flamboyant. Yes. which In I, the, the original. Love it. Absolutely love it. No matter the flame. Now I need to see, an, I need to see it's Italian Pegasus. I need to see how different countries around the world do this effeminate man justice. <laughs> I'm very curious. Um, I like that, uh, Hayato has a deck that is exclusive to him. It is the Australia deck. He has cards Uh that are not in the actual game, like Eucalyptus Mole, um, which is a hilarious card that we never got, unfortunately. They're not looking to do anything. Um, you can really tell in the duel, Kronos is, uh, Kronos is actually testing if Hayato has improved, like, setting up super easy beginner traps, um, and putting, like, monsters in defense to see if he goes for that one instead of the actual threats on board, but he's not falling for it, and he's actually, like, improving and showing that he actually understands a little bit more about the game now, um, which I really like to see, because it really does call back to, like, remembering how he started the game, where he would, like, <laughs> put big, uh, put Desk Koala in defense, but not put it face down, and he would make simple mistakes that would cost him the game. Uh, so to show of them, like, saying, like, no, he is actually showing and he is actually caring, um, is nice. 
Uh, this is where I learned Beast Soul's original Japanese name is Cattle Mutilation. <laughs> <laughs> yep, sure is. Which is a really fucked up uh, name for it. Um, this <laughs> again, showing more Kronos of him like getting really like excited and pumped that his student is actually like improving and showing that he's improved. Uh, which is really great because I love that this version of Kronos is the good one. It's the one that goes Mamma Mia Gorgonzola Cheese. This is the this is actually the peak version of the character. <laughs> it is not the one with the less Italian stereotyping. Um, when Hayato does a flashback, his first thought is of <laughs> Masawa in the bomber jacket. <laughs> <laughs> the suicide deck jacket. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Uh, this is where they give the backstory about how he talked about, like, when he was at his lowest point, he was basically, like, saying, like, I'm going to, I don't think that I'm cut out for this. I think I'm terrible at what I'm doing. I'm not improving. So what he does is that his family gives him, like, a trip to Australia, which was supposed to, like, um, make him cheer up, but he was going to use it as a way to basically say, I'm done with the game. He was going to take his deck and throw it off of the air mountain and basically say like, that's it for me. I'm done. I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm not good at it. I just don't understand. And when he's actually up on top of it and he sees like all the mountainous range and he's like, I can't do it. There's still a part of me that really wants to improve in this. And there's, it's, like, too important to me, and I can't give it up, and I'm gonna keep on trying. I was like, oh, you big, fat, lovely man, don't make me feel this way. <laughs> and it was, like, actually, I was, like, going, I can't believe I fucking care this much about this character. But them showing, actually, him struggling and being like, oh, man, I'm just, I'm such a fuck-up. I just, I just need to give up. I need to throw away my deck. It's over. And, like, this one instance where he sees, like, uh, something beautiful and he's like, no, I think I can keep on going, I can keep on trying. It actually did remind me, because back in the day, I actually had a lot of troubles in school. And I had, like, a lot, I had, like, a very similar situation to this, except for I didn't get, I couldn't afford Australia. <laughs> I couldn't go that far. <laughs> but I actually had a moment because I was doing so much trying to graduate from high school. I don't think I've ever said it, but I'm going to say it here now. Fuck it, whatever, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. I, there was a time where I was having a really hard time going through high school, and I felt like a, a burden kind of trying to do what I was trying to do, because I felt like, oh, it would be better if I just, like, wasn't around. And at this one moment, I, like, looked at the door of my house, I said, it was, like, midnight, and everyone was asleep, so I was like, it would just be so easy, so much easier if I just opened the door and I left, and I didn't come back. And for that, I've never seen a character go through this specific feeling that I had, and I can't believe it's in fucking Yu-Gi-Oh! GX! Because <laughs> that moment where he shows it, and he's, like, going through it, I was like, I, I was, like, having actual legitimate flashbacks. I was like, I, this is so stupid. Why is it in this show? Why is it with the character that summons Big Koala? <laughs> but I thought it was very well done, and I actually really liked it, and... Yeah, and at the end of the day, when he does the duel and he says, I'm gonna, I'm not going to give up on my dream, he still fails. But that's enough. And even though he fails, the teacher accepts him and he goes, you know what? The important thing is, is that you have improved and that's enough for me. This, give this motherfucker a graduation. <laughs> and he graduates and he gets to live on in his dream. And I was like, oh, this is amazing. Yu-Gi-Oh! GX is some of the best shit I've ever seen. Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, that peak fiction. I told you it was good. It was, yeah, yeah, this is the one where I was like, he was right. Zen was fucking right. It is peak fiction. It is amazing. It is lovely. It was amazing that this one singular duel that is around Hayato could make me feel this much for him. And I really do think a lot of it comes down to the characterization. The fact that this is a character that is constantly shown failing and is trying, still trying his best. He is nowhere near the top of the echelon. He's not even really on show's level. <laughs> he's really... No, he's not. He's not, but he is trying his best. And at the end of the day, that he tried it the best that he could and he was able to succeed is enough. And... Yeah, this episode was amazing. I loved it. 10 out of 10, peak fiction. When the time comes for me to argue for best episode of what we watch for Shonen Archive for the year, I'm going to bet for this one. <laughs> 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 but yeah, absolutely loved it. So a lot of it obviously comes back to it reminding me a lot of my, my troubles of going through school and actually seeing it in a character that's 
big as well, so that helps a lot. But yeah, it ended up coming up back to me, and I, I loved it. And he also was super into Yu-Gi-Oh, just like me. The only difference is that his family is rich, and my family wasn't! <laughs> <laughs> Still, very good character. So, what do you feel about this one, Zen? <laughs> uh, it, is, it is a good episode. I like um, I like the Japanese version significantly more, mm-hmm. because... Um, Basically, the Japanese version of Kronos, despite, again, just being like a Mario-level stereotype of Italian people, mm-hmm. um, is just a much better person <laughs> most of the time. Um, I really like, like you said, that he does not win. Like, it would have been really easy to make this, like, the feel-good episode mm-hmm. where he beats the teacher and it's a big deal, but he doesn't win. He just straight up loses the game. Um, and I kind of feel like, I mean, this is a kid's show, and I feel like this is ultimately, like, a good... Well, okay, I guess the Japanese version is more like a teenage show, but in English, anyway, it's a kid's show. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think a good lesson is that, like, you don't always win every time, but, like, what matters is putting the effort in. And that was sort of the whole point was, like, yeah, you're not the best. You're not even, you're not even like, in the top 75% of the players in this school. Mm-hmm. But you wanted to do something... And at the end of the day, you put effort in and made steps toward that. So I'm willing to support you to continue doing that. And I thought that was that yeah. was a good lesson, especially for a lot of people in like like struggling with school and stuff. Like you said, where like you know, if you're not the best, you're the worst. Is the way that a lot of schools run. That like you know, if you're not yeah. killing it, then who gives a shit? Um, yeah, and I it's especially tough lesson. when it's something that you love. Like, for example, a lot of people love dueling in this world. Not everyone can be the top duelist. Not everyone can be the Judai or the Kaisers of the world. And so they kind of look at a character who is a little bit more, like, down even below what you would expect, like, the the best friend's character to be. And see him kind of go through an understanding that how do I go around in this world when I don't really feel like... I can be on the same par as everyone else, but he ends up finding something that works for him where he works for industrial illusions. He like continues to work at it and he sees a different path and he can continue forward. And you know, good lesson, good stuff. Good job, GX. You did it. You finally, you got me on this one. It is peak. It is fiction. It's peak fiction. (laughs) It is great stuff. And now, speaking of going into straight some more peak, this is some fantastic stuff as we're going to go into the next episode. Oh boy, now we're here at the end game. We're here at episode 51 versus Kaiser part one. Uh, first part, Power Bond and Cyber End, or as it's known in the Japanese part, the, the English dub version, the graduation match part one. Go ahead, Zen. So, uh... Kaiser is in the graduation class this year. Uh, he's no longer you know, he's graduating from the academy. And because he is the top student, he gets this special like reward privilege where he gets to choose anyone in the school, um, and he gets to duel them, and he chooses Judai. Um, they announce who it's going to be, and you know, there's some some comedy scenes in the beginning where everyone's like, oh, it should have been me or whatever. Uh, and Kaiser's like, you know, I want to see... Because we dueled once before, and, like, I kicked the shit out of him. <laughs> you know, Judai got obliterated the last time they played. Mm. Um, and he's like, I want to see, you know, how much better you've gotten since that time that we played, because I've seen what you can do. Uh, and so they do duel most of the first episode, as is usually the case with the two-parters. Um, the vast majority of episode one is the duel. Um and they, Judai is kind of like, they talk about how he's not playing that great. Um, he, he's not playing as well as he could be. Um, and it's because Judai is taking this duel like really seriously. He was like pre-planning his deck and trying to go through every move. And he's trying to, he's trying to like make sure that every single move that he makes is perfectly well thought out and everything. And um, I don't, I don't remember if. He says it in this episode or the next episode, but eventually he gives Judai this speech of like you're you're not playing like yourself. You're trying to play like, like what you think a better player is, but you're not you're not succeeding because you're not doing the the game the way that you normally would. Um, which I actually think that's in the next episode. I think I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, I think in this um, one they're just kind of showing that 
he's yeah. not it's different from usual because he's not trying to have any fun and he's overthinking things yeah he's like he's trying to win instead of have fun which is not usually the way that he plays mm-hmm. um and then the episode ends with him um staring down a power bonded cyber end dragon yeah which is crazy uh let me put some is there any differences in adaptations then there are, and it, once again, it's that the English version, everyone's a dickhead. Um, <laughs> in the English version, when Kaiser is leaving the dorm, uh, the Slifer dorm, to talk to Judai, he says, uh, this dorm is a good fit for you kids. Um, in the Japanese version, he says, uh, the hinges on your door are like not well-maintained. I'm going to talk to the principal and get your room <laughs> fixed. <laughs> good guy. Yeah. And then... Um, when Zane uses Future Fusion and it does like that, you know, the GX shot where like the decks just start spanning the screen. Um, he has two cards in there that are uh, duplicates in the Japanese version and they're just made random fucking cards in the English version because the English version just slaps cards over top of it. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it's like Y Dragon Head that he definitely doesn't have. No. And uh, Draining Shield that is just in his deck now because they didn't want to show a duplicate in that, I guess. Silly. Even though having duplicate cards in your deck is just a thing that Yu Gi Oh does. Yeah, really teaching kids the wrong lesson here, which is that all, our, all cards should be singles <laughs> up. Even though he already runs three Cyber Dragons. If someone runs three Cyber Dragons, you can put two. You can take a pretty good guess and say he probably runs multiple copies of other cards. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is the start of this one, start of this episode. Let me see what specific notes I got here. Dual Future Fusion is a continuous... They changed it from a continuous spell to an equip spell, which I thought was just an interesting change to it. Um... We also got to see old Future Fusion, which is the good version of Future Fusion. Before yeah, I got pre errata million times. Future yeah, Fusion. before it was eroded because it was like <laughs> it turns out just giving people um, a foolish burial that you could do for like potentially twenty cards in your deck is not a good idea. So we're just gonna, <laughs> you know what? We're just gonna take that back real quick and put a quick errata on it. Now you have to wait four turns if you want to do anything with it. Um, I kind of like the setup here where uh, Judai is dueling, but he's putting too much like thought and effort, which is really funny to say thought and effort into it. Um, he's like thinking of it too much when in actual his actual self would just go with the flow and do stuff like that. I think it's a good way of showing that maybe he's a little bit rattled and this is not the version of he- Judai that uh, Kaiser wanted to fight. Um well, you know, real good lesson to say here is that you should always try and have fun. Maybe not go so crazy. He would have done much better in the beginning if he was doing that. Uh, I also like that they kind of call back to the first duel, like activating different dimension capsule and him trying to figure out what what card is it. He's like keeps worrying about power bond and thinking about like, oh, power bond, power bond. But he's it's like a tunnel. He keeps running into it and it's not working out for him. And that's why he ends up with him facing down the board that he sees. So... Good setup. Uh, definitely a good way of showing how much things have changed and how... Which is funny because it's showing how much things have changed, but also showing that like the real best way for him to have won or done better in the beginning is if he would actually was dueling in his old style as opposed to doing the super serious, like, trying to think it out kind of thing. Which I guess no one ever really talks about is that, like, yeah, there's certain, like, people who duel and they take it very seriously and they think about, like, uh, they could play this, they could play that, they could play this. But then there's people who just, like, don't work. For example, there are the, the, the difference between a good player and a bad player is the players who specifically stop summoning on their fifth summon and go, he could have Nibiru. And there, there's the players who continue to summon after their fifth summon and say, like, oh, yeah, Nibiru's just not a card. I'm just going to keep playing. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely feel like Judai is one of those players. He's definitely one who would play heavily into the bureau. Mm-hmm. Oh, easily. Easily. Are you kidding me? And then he would figure out a way to win with the token. That's just the kind of duelist I feel that he is. <laughs> and he would be like, oh, I guess this is my board now. Uh, let's see how we go from here. But yeah, that's how I feel about this episode. Good start of it. How do you feel? Very good. Yeah, the graduation duel is one of my favorite duels in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! Not just GX, like all of it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just cool as shit. 
And the second part is better, of course, but the the first part is a very good introduction to the duel. Mm-hmm. All right, then let's continue talking about the duel as we finish the end of it. Then this is it, the end of Season 1 of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, Episode 52, versus Kaiser, fi- second part, Final Fusion, or as it's known in the, du- in the dub, The Graduation Match Part 2. So they uh, are continuing the duel. Kaiser gives him kind of this excla- uh, explanation that, like, ah, oh, this sucks that this was my graduation duel because you played like shit, basically. Like, you're so much better than this and you didn't play well at all. Um, Judai is kind of frustrated because he feels like he's been planning and thinking and doing all this stuff and it wasn't good enough. Um, and it, it kind of starts getting in his head that he's like... Um, you know, am I am I trying harder than I've ever tried before, and I still can't win? Like, am I just not? Do I don't? Do I not have it? Am I not that guy? Um, Judai manages to squeak by on the turn with just a thousand or a hundred life points um, through the Cyber End Dragon, and then Kaiser negates the damage from Power Bond using a monster card that he tributes to stop it from hurting him. Um, and then Kaiser kind of reminds him again that, like, you know, this isn't this isn't how you play. Like, you play in a specific way, and you kind of make miracles happen. And I I want you to play that way. Um, they take a break, and they like chill, and they have a, a meal in the middle of the game mm-hmm. um, because Kaiser's like, fine, fuck it, I don't care. Um, that's what, meal, that's more like it. <laughs> that's what I was yeah, waiting for. <laughs> that's what I wanted. This fucking shenanigans. Um, after the meal, Judai starts making much better plays. <laughs> better um, plays by playing Pot of Greed. <laughs> yes, by playing Pot of Greed immediately. Um, he gets uh, Future Fusion from, I think he uses uh, Kaiser's version. And he uh, uses Rampart Blaster for this <laughs> fucking elemental heroes. Um, Judai dodges Cyber and Dragon again, and the rest of the duel is kind of them taking swings at one another back and forth and kind of countering one another's plays over and over again. Um, When they get down to the final exchange, um, Kaiser uses Cybernetic Fusion Support, which was a very meta card in Duel Links for a while, which is funny. Um, (laughs) Lord and lets him pay half his life points, and then he can fuse out of the graveyard instead. So he uses Cyber and Dragon again with Power Bond, and then he uses Limiter Removal on top of that to give it 16,000 um, attack points. And he goes to attack for game, and then Judai plays Battle Fusion, which is a ridiculous card uh, in the GX era where you just get all of your opponent's attack points. Um, yeah, that's insane. <laughs> yeah. And so that's Sean honest and a quick play. bumps up to almost twenty one thousand, and then uh, Kaiser uses it as well, and Cyber End shoots up to thirty six thousand, and then they're like, "Oh man, you're awesome!" And then Kaiser's like, "You are too," but I win. And Judah's like, "No, you fucking don't." And he flips his face down card, Final Fusion, which damages both players equal to the combined attack of the monsters that are battling. Uh, so they both take 57,000 life points worth of damage, <laughs> and it's a tie. And everyone applauds. <laughs> to be honest, if uh, you saw this at a YCS, and two two players somehow were able to deal 57,000 points of damage to themselves, you would be get people cheering like crazy, even though you just caused a tie. <laughs> Because at a certain point, big damage is big damage, and we'd love to see yeah, that. Yeah, big number. Big number uh, make whatever it's called, uh, dopamine happen. Yeah, it does. Uh, was there any differences in adaptations then? Looks like there was. In the Japanese version, Judai and Kaiser make references to the other one being perfect. Um, and they both kind of think that, like, the other one's kind of better than them because, like, Kaiser says that, you know, um, everyone says I'm, like, the perfect duelist, but I've kind of hit, you know, that wall. But your potential is basically unlimited because you just kind of play from your heart. Like, there's only so good you can do the way I do it. 
but the way you do it, like there's no cap. Uh, mm. That scene does not happen in the English version. Yeah, you can't have too much positivity in the English version. Yes, if it's not being snarky assholes, you can't have it. Yeah, if Kaiser. Yeah, if, there, <laughs> if, not, if not every scene feels like that scene where um, from the Fast and the Furious where the character says, "I almost had you," then <laughs> it's not approved for the dub. <laughs> also, according to this wiki, uh, Cyber and Dragon held the record for the highest achieved finite attack in the series. The record was eventually broken in episode 98 of Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel, where number 39 Utopic Ray V and number 104 Masquerade achieved 83,200 attack and 41,700 attack, respectively, both topping Cyber and Dragon's record of 36,900 attack in this episode. Similarly, Final Fusion held the record for the highest finite damage inflicted on a single card for a little over eight years. Damn, eight years. The record was broken on the airing of Yu-Gi-Oh! Zex. Damn you, Zexel. They were just like, we're going to break all the records for this one. We got we to gotta break the records in this one, boys. Got to do it. Where Don Thousand was defeated by an attack from an overpowered number 39 Utopia, suffering a... <laughs> what? Uh, 104,000 points of battle damage. Technically, Final Fusion still holds the record for terms of some da- total damage inflicted due to both Jaden and uh, Judai and uh, Kaiser being affected of Jesus Christ. Too much of a number, but it's 115,600. 115,600. Yeah, thank you. I, uh, <laughs> school systems have failed me. I don't fully <laughs> remember how to say those. But thank you for big this. Big number good. Two big numbers scary. Two very big numbers scare me. Um, Jesus Christ, that's a lot. That's crazy to think that that still holds the record. <laughs> Unless yeah, some... after all the Yu-Gi-Oh shows that have come out. Yeah, and especially because I remember right. Couldn't Dawn Thousand get like uh, one, some fucking ridiculous number of attack or something? Mm. I have no idea. I did not watch Zexel. No, I remember there's a card called Don Thousand that is basically because they're related to the Numerons. I know this because I've seen funny replays where people think, "Oh, I'm fighting fucking Numeron," and then they get hit by Don Thousand. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really funny card. It's uh, much. A- it's actively worse than going for the Numeron play. <laughs> But it's worth it for big number. Big number important. It's true. You're 100 percent right. Though you could also get a big number by uh, going Numeron and then hitting it up with double limit of removal. Limit of removal is such a good card. I love that card. Yeah, it's really good. It's a. Uh, it's definitely evocative of this era. When I think of this era, specifically Yu-Gi-Oh, I think of uh, limit of removal, and I think of God damn it, I can't believe I fucking lost again the Cyberstein FDK. <laughs> it happened a lot back then. This duel, it, it, man, the game was crazy back in the day. Yeah, that's it's a completely different beast from what you would expect. Um, there was still FDKs and there was still a lot of garbage play. It was just different. It was different garbage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lovely garbage, though. Would gladly do it again. But yeah, this duel, this is a fantastic duel. It's a great way of ending a character kind of going off. Uh, he goes off with both of them kind of in full destruction. We get to see the full breath of, like, oh, yeah, Judai has really learned from the first time he dueled him, and now we see him here. I really like when he stopped everything to get some food, and the Chancellor was like, oh, his strength maybe comes from um, his strong gut. And I was like, oh, yeah, just like Kid Goku. It's exactly when he's, <laughs> <laughs> when he's not at full strength. He's not that good. But, yeah, there's this is just an enjoyable-ass duel to watch. Like, I didn't even take it very is. much. It's just such a fun duel. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, good back and forth, a lot of, like, twists and turns of things go down, a lot of cards being activated, a lot of fusion summoning in an era where there's not a lot of fusion summoning going on. At one point, he fucking activates Elemental Burst, which is amazing. <laughs> Uh, which is tribute one, uh, wind, water, fire, and earth monster to activate this card effect. And I, even though there was a wind on this field, Avion did not get destroyed at all. He was sacrificed. I don't consider that being owned. He was being, he won the day in that instance. He was adding his power to a greater purpose. Exactly. But, um, yeah, it's just a really good way to end uh, a season, I would say. I'm so, you're so used to seeing a lot of duels where the... Because, specifically, in Season 1 of Yu-Gi-Oh!, let's say, 
the duel itself, what hangs in the balance is the fate of the world itself. So it's always like, well, yes, Yugi wins. <laughs> the world ceases to exist if he does not win. Mm-hmm. But because in this one it's so specifically more of a like personal kind of stakes against each other, you can kind of have the thing where it's like, I actually don't know who's going to win this one at the end because, you know, um, the stakes aren't there in terms of like crazy over the top but the thing that is at stake is that both just want to really win and they that's enough for me honestly because <laughs> that's how i feel like when i play Yu-Gi-Oh. is that there's not really that much at stake other than i would really like to win Yu-Gi-Oh, and potentially if i'm in a tournament then i would like to win Yu-Gi-Oh and get some more packs from uh, for winning but for, in general play more Yu Gi Oh. yes the the joy here is in playing more Yu Gi Oh, and i feel like they really ha- hammer this home of Sometimes it's just the best time to be having uh, to be playing Yu-Gi-Oh is when you're just having fun with each other and you're just like going for crazy shit. That's when you're gonna get your best games, and I really feel that in this episode, in these two episodes. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, fantastic duel from start to finish. I love the ending, where um, because you know they just kind of pulled the, the pulled it on you where they're like, oh, you thought Hayato was gonna win, but he didn't win, and then I kind of thought they were gonna do the same thing with Judai, where they're gonna be like, oh, you know. Kaiser flipped his car to the last minute. Judai gave it everything he had, but, you know, he did so much better this time. And then uh, Judai's like, no, we're, we're both dead. We're, we're both dying right now. <laughs> um, which is such a fucking good way to end. Because, you know, I kind of like, too, that it, that it emphasizes Judai, like, just doing it. You know, just doing shit. Because who puts a play in their deck for, like mutually assured destruction <laughs> the answer is judai because <laughs> if you want to win you, you're not putting cards in your deck to make you lose but judai's like you know what would be pretty rad if i fucking use this card <laughs> he's right too yeah 100 percent. and i think they eventually added this card to the game and the, it's very easy to cause ties with it if you're both playing fusions <laughs> which is great uh, final fusion. Let me see if there's a doop 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 doop. If I can see the, yeah, I think the the actual card itself. You don't take any damage from the battle, and then you both take damage equal to the attack of both fusion monsters. Jesus. So it's very, and you both take it at the same time. So it's very easy for you to just tie <laughs> and end it the same way that uh, a Judai so and good, Kaiser. Though. That's rad. Yeah, I think I think that's a really nice attention to detail in that one. So, yes, that is the end of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Season 1. While we're here at the end, let's do a little bit of a wrap-up. How did you end up feeling about Season 1 in general, Zen? Season 1 of GX, it is definitely the weakest season. Um, there, There's a lot of stuff in it where the it hasn't really found its footing, and it's kind of just like, what, you know, what do we do here? <laughs> you know, what do we, what do, we do with card games now that you know we've kind of already did previous Yu-Gi-Oh! how the fuck do we keep making this interesting it's just card games Hmm. um but it has some great high points it has some really really good duels in it um again i think the graduation duel is one of my favorite duels in the entire franchise let alone this specific series it's just it's just good, man. Yu-Gi-Oh! GX has so much heart. It's got so much soul in it all the time. Yeah, I think that's a good way of putting it, is that there's just a lot of heart in here. And I think I understand why they had felt like such a... Why they, the dub adaptation of it is so, like, anti that. Because I really feel like around this time, let's say, around the 2000s era, yeah, there's a there was not a lot of time for sincerity in america and around the 2000s 2006 no. there's a lot of snarky stuff going on and there's just like not a lot of like er- there's not a lot of ways you could have been earnest back then which feels really weird to say but it was just kind of the time it was the sign of the times at the time um where a show like this that is so much like earnest in what it's trying to say and it's very much telling it in a way that is trying to be like you know not really sugarcoating a lot of what it's saying and delivering it in a but still delivering it in a way that's easy to swallow and trying to understand its lessons um it's understandable why when they try and dub it over an american would go like well we're getting rid of all of that shit (laughs) (laughs) yeah we're getting rid of all this 
the positivity shit. Ugh. 2006. No, thank you. <laughs> Maybe in <laughs> 10 years from now, we'll find not, some. Not edgy enough. Yeah, nowhere near. Let me see. What were the big shows of 2006? Big shows of. I, I like that when I t- typed in big shows, it immediately showed me the wrestler big shows. <laughs> yeah, Robin Big was in the fu- was a big show of 2006. I think that should tell you where America was at <laughs> in 2006. What we were living through. Yeah, American Idol was around. We were mocking people who were genuinely chasing a dream, which we still mm-hmm. do to this day. Violently mocking them. Violently mocking people who dared to say, like, oh, you think you could sing? You're going to try? Here you go. Here's a British man that's going to put you down and completely dash any of your hopes and dreams. Not give any constructive criticisms. Nothing but a huge put down. House was big in there. House is another show where it's very similar to someone just being very curt and just being like, ugh, just trying to be an asshole. Two and a half men. I don't need to say anything more. <laughs> you can yeah. see that. I mean, Psych was airing in 2006, and that's kind of the same way, too, is even though it's played for laughs the whole time, um, James wrote it. Sean is like, his whole character is just being an asshole to people. Mm-hmm. It's true. Just in a charming way. Yeah, that that was just the style of the time. So, it's kind of nice to see it in the way it was originally intended. Earnestness and all. Because um, it really is a show that I think has a lot of heart. The lows, they are fucking low. When we talk about some of the worst episodes that we've seen in uh, Shonen Archive, I'll just say that they're lucky that there was no weird transphobia in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, so it's not taking the award for the worst thing we've seen in Shonen Correct. Archive. <laughs> but there's Gintama, st- I think, might never lose that title. <laughs> If we no, if we ever find an episode that's worse than that one episode of Gitsama, we might quit the show. <laughs> because I gotta tell you now, there's no way in hell there's something worse than that. Um, but a lot of the lows are really low, and they're really bad, and they're very annoying. And they're the worst you could say about them is that you're just going like, man. At, at its worst, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX makes you feel like, oh man, it, you know, I. Kind of wish I just had original Yu-Gi-Oh back. It was also kind of bad, but it wasn't this bad, it feels like. Uh, but then when you get to the peaks of it, it reaches stuff that goes, I think, even beyond original Yu-Gi-Oh. Especially for Season 1 Yu-Gi-Oh. The highs of GX Season 1, I think, are higher than the highs of original Yu-Gi-Oh. But I still think that original Yu-Gi-Oh Season 1 is probably a better, like... Through line. Actually, when does season one of Yu-Gi-Oh! end? Do you consider that Battle City uh, season two? Battle City is definitely not season one. Mm. Season one, uh, I, I'm pretty sure, ends at the end of the Duelist Kingdom. Um, mm. Season one is everything up to when the Millennium Puzzle gets chained up in the fire when he duels the possessed Bandit Keith. So, Battle City proper begins in Season 2. Hmm. Season 1 is Duelist Kingdom, Dungeon Dice Monsters, um, when they end up going into the virtual world to duel oh, the Big God. Five. Yeah. That's right. Five-Headed yeah. Dragon and uh, Gender Bat mm-hmm. Mokuba. Yep. What Princess the... Mokuba. Finally, my <laughs> peak version of Mokuba comes to life. Thank God Mokuba's never going to see this. Oh, no! <laughs> Uh, shame. But yeah, I really do feel like the highs of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX reach higher than the highs of Yu-Gi-Oh! But probably, if you look at it as a whole, actually, we'll have to see it again. It's a little bit hard for me because there is a lot of nostalgia for me for original Season 1 Yu-Gi-Oh! Even though I recognize that the Battle City is the peak best part of Yu-Gi-Oh! I still really do enjoy the wacky duty things that they do in Season yeah, 1 well, of Yu-Gi-Oh! There's, like, there's something charming about Yu-Gi-Oh! in general when it's not like competitive online trading cards but with anime characters. Like, Battle City is absolutely the peak of the series. But there's something funny and kind of enjoyable over like Duelist Kingdom where that shit made no sense. Yeah. But because it made no sense they could do like rad shit and you could be like, fuck, that's awesome! He stabbed yeah. the moon with his fucking... giant stone man yes specifically yes okay so yeah that's where i kind of feel like there's a lot more iconic silly things in season one and a lot of the iconic silly things of Yu-Gi-Oh gx are the monkey duel (laughs) and it's like not on the same level of iconic silly things 
But either way, obviously both great Fantastic series. You shouldn't ever really try and compare them because they're just both good and you should just both enjoy them. <laughs> but yeah, season one. Um, if you say this is the worst season, when we eventually go to the other seasons, I can't wait to see what's uh, what's more there. Cause... Season one is the worst season and by what I would consider a, a decent margin as well. Mm. That's yeah, that's great. If they have more. Oh, stuff. and fun fact: because you're watching the Japanese version, uh, the bad guy of season two is Dio. Really? Is Dio? Yeah, and his uh, ace card is uh, the world. Is that why you never stop playing Duel Links? Is because you have uh, access to potentially Dio at any time? <laughs> access if... <laughs> to Dio whenever you want. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. We will. I will. Yeah. I can't wait to see that when we get to it. So yeah, let's talk about the plans. We'll, we should probably actually make a separate video and talk about our plans larger. But yeah, this probably. is the end of Season 1 uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. We will continue Season 2 at a later time. We just want to see some other stuff for the time being. And frankly for us, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a very easy series to kind of drop off and then come back to it later. Because <laughs> it's a lot of like, oh yeah, we'll remember by the next time uh, we come yeah, back. Yeah, well I mean, especially with like GX, every season is just kind of its own thing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you don't need to remember, like, what happened in the grudge. Like, you know, you remember, you know. Yeah. If you and graduated, if, that's all you need to know. And if you don't, if you don't know, then they will remind you. Yeah, you'll get the, the anime recap. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, good first season. So, that's the end of the Shonen Archive, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. As always, if you want to see more content featuring Zen, you can go over to Zen's channel, where you can go check out Shonen and Chill. And if you want more me stuff, then you're already on my channel. Go watch those other videos. Go click some ads. Go do some stuff. I swear, it's a go good idea. Go watch the transphobia episode of, of Gintama Shonen Archive. <laughs> yeah, go watch that one. <laughs> <laughs> of all the ones to watch, the go whole, watch the that one. Where the whole time we're like, no, please. Please, no. Where all we do is say, man, that previous episode was so good. Why would you do yeah. this? <laughs> Why? We're not joking when we said there was like a good five episodes where they were some of the worst five episodes I ever could ever think of in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. I think I would rather watch those five episodes than watch the Gintama episode again. <laughs> it's that kind of bad. Oh yeah, easily. Yeah, it's uh... <coughs> damn. But anyway, that's it for now everyone. We will see you guys in the next video wherever you might be. Until next time, say goodbye Zen. Goodbye everybody. Bye. Bye. Oh